What is good friends, we are back with Shake versus Nintendi and uh, my computer is kind of lagging, it's a bit annoying. And Nintendi brought a team which looks like the team that Jammet made in RS, but he has a Weewell instead of a Garchomp. It's like the only difference I see. And the Omega Yancy plus Starmie, they get rid of hazards or don't let get hazards up on your side to core. Shakespeare looks like a threat to me. But I, man, I really have to do something about this lag. Let me pause it real quick, maybe. So he leads up with Metagross, breaking uh, the Yancy lead. And then he led up with Ferrothorn. And this, the lag should be better now. I did close my Discord. But does Metagross have hammer arm on this team? Let me see. Nothing it doesn't necessarily have to be hammer arm because he has a Kelio and his Clefable could have flamethrower. I mean Kelio can cannot switch into Feral Zone, so he still needs something to hit it. The, he stayed in, which makes me think he has hammer arm, but yeah, he already showed it. And he misses turn one, so yeah, no classic Pokemon. That would have done around 65 maybe? Like 60 to 70, I assume. But yeah, I think Nintendo is on Team Brazil. I'm 100% sure at the moment. And Shake is on, I think, US East. I could see him going into Clefable or. Yeah, he goes into Clefable, exactly. Clefable or Kelly, I was about to say, but. Kelly is too risky, so Clef makes more sense. Because Clefable beats most Feral Zones when we won. The only Feral Zone that really beats Clefable is the T with uh, Iron Head one. Which has knockoff. So I assume this is gonna be a Stealth Rocks Clefable. Okay, they both have a knockoff. Clef losing leftovers is a bit annoying because Weevil on the other side can become a threat. He does have a Kelly to check it, but still. Kelly <coughs> losing its item would really be, would also be annoying, so that's why Kelly is not really a good rebel switch in. Because if Kelly loses the specs, it can't really break through Starmie. Like, if. Kelly with specs and gets a burn on Starmie or has HP electric, it can actually do good damage to Starmie. <clears throat> yeah, I think this is a Scarf Landers because the the Clefable showed knockoff. I mean, he can still be knockoff Combine Clef, but most of the time you see knockoff on Stealth Rocks and Softball and Moonblast on that set with knockoff. But yeah, if Shake is Scarf. Hmm. I can see Nintendo going for Recover, but on the other side, what if Shake goes for Knockoff? I don't know if Recover is a good play for Nintendo. I don't think Shake should, st should stay in, oh, but j j what if he stays in and goes for Knockoff? <coughs> so if I'm Nintendo, I'm either going into my fer Ferrothorn or. Okay, goes into Landris. Just play that save, goes into Cool Fable on a potential Scald. And he's gonna go get some chip on the Landris. So that's probably Rocky Hammer Landris. I can see him going Volcarona here or. What else? I think Volcarona, like, he doesn't really have good switch into this cliff. Because Ferrothorn can come in, but what is Ferrothorn doing back? He goes to Yancey, okay? Breaks the knock of really nice play. If he has HP Fire or Earth Power, he might go for that, predicting the Metagross, but he's probably just gonna exactly go for that. <clears throat> Diamond Storm. I think this Clefable is mixed defensive. I mean, it depends on the DNC spirit, because if the DNC is mixed attack, I assume this Clefable is a mixed defense, because he still eats it up decently well. But I think this DNC is like mixed attacking. More special attack invested. 
and the club is also like mixed defensive is what I think like he might go for Moonblast and change it up to see the Clefable spread but he can run like like run the cull and figure out the spread anyway But Snow is playing very soon, I really hope they don't play at the same time. The Yancy only has a few Diamond Storms left, but knocking off the leftovers on Clef was a huge deal because, like, Clefable would eat these hits up, like, way more easily. Or I think that's, I hope that's correct English. If it still had leftovers intact, it could beat this Yancy easily when we won. As long as it avoids crits, obviously, but yeah, we do see Mumas does around the same amount. Then Diamond Storm does, and that's, I think that confirms that this is mixed defensive. But wow, he got a really low roll there, 46 and then 40. But he does get a special attack drop, which means Moonblast from Clefable won't do much now. And the combination... Oh, Clefable gets a special attack drop. The thing is, Nintendo can still fish for Diamond Storm, crits, and high rolls, and the Clefable will eventually... Like, it will keep losing softballs, he only has 11 left. But the special attack drop will obviously... I think the special attack drop will kind of force the Yancy out in a few turns, because he probably doesn't want to waste... all this Diamond Storm PP. The thing is... He doesn't really need Diamond Storm for any other Pokémon, because... everything else just gets hit harder by Moonblast, like... Yeah, like, basically, Moonblast does more damage to everything else, so I guess he kind of can waste his Diamond Storm PP. Why is the the Yancy like behind the bar here? Like you can't really see it. Like sometimes and it goes up. Man, I hate that we see like in Auras you always see Clefable no matter what. Like one of the two players is always gonna bring a Clef. Yeah, he's just gonna softball here. The thing is... I think Nintendo's in a good position because he has Hazard's up. And if the laddie wants to defog, that would give Weaver a free switch in. And Weaver can basically get rid of the laddie. Like, I think if, if I would get the Weeble in the Lari, I would just click knockoff if I'm Nintendo later in the game. And he goes hard Kelly on the Volcarona. Um, I assume he's gonna be Specs Kelly with Hydro Pump, and Giga Drain might. I think Giga Drain barely doesn't kill. I just think Stone Edge and Aura is no way. I do want to see what Corona versus Kelly, how much Gigadrin does at plus one. Oh my god, Gigadrin does a ton, never mind, it might kill, so maybe it's Scarf Kelly then if you went. It does 84 to 100, so Gigadrin always kills. Wow. I really thought it would only do like a bit less. Like. So that's a Specs Kelly for sure. So the. <laughs> he was bluffing a Scarf that is in Bluff Master. That's definitely specs damage because this is, I assume, max HP Starmie. So he can, he might go into Weaver predicting a recover. Even though Nintendo might scold you, so going hard Weaver is risky. I can see him going into Clefable or Larios too. Oh my god, he. Shows Thunder Wave and there's the Hydro Pump miss, which sucks. It wouldn't have killed. I don't think the Hydro Pump miss matters too much. It's definitely a bit annoying, but he was paralyzed, and the Starmie could have recovered on the next turn anyway. The only way, like the only difference this makes, is that Shake kind of loses one turn because the Starmie is still healthy now. Because otherwise, he would have been forced to go for recover, and now he kind of just got a free turn. But he goes out into Ferrothorn, potentially predicting a switch into Weewile. Not really sure what he predicted there. 
Yeah, I'm actually not sure what. Maybe he predicted the Ladi because he didn't want to give him a free defog. Because if the Ladi came out, and if the Ladi doesn't have HP fire, the Ferrothorn can lead shoot it and get health back. But he does go for power and take Rocky Helmet damage after taking a Specs pump. So this Ferrothorn is getting chipped that it lost the leftovers earlier. So they're both Helmet Landers. Shake didn't go for rocks yet. I assume he's gonna wanna defog soon, so. The thing is, he can still go for rocks because. Rocks hurts Nintendi's team a lot. I don't think there's a world in which Nintendi. I don't think Nintendi's ever going hard into Diancy here. Oh my fucking god! Stop him! Okay, I would not have made that play. I can understand why he made that play, but I just wouldn't have made that play. Because, like, he could have definitely Earthquake there, because, like... If the Ferris wants to leech it, you want to Earthquake that to, to weaken it a lot. But I assume Nintendi just... Uh, not Nintendi, Shaq just predicted Nintendi to switch out into Landris or stay in with the Ferrothorn. But that boy went hard into the Yancy. I assume Mumbai's killed Landris from... 69. The NC Mega. I do have offensive landers in the Kalk. I should just go to X and Y because then they have the exact sets for the Yancy and the Kalk. Are you defensive versus Mega the Yancy? Are you offensive? Moonblast does 56 to 66. So it's a roll. He goes for protect, which kind of confirms that he's probably not able to kill the landers from there. Okay, this Stami is a pain to deal with for Shake, but he's always the possibility of him going Ladi or Weavile, and he goes hard Weavile this time, predicting a recover. Does it work out? Did he go for T-Wave? He does go for T-Wave, really nice play. And I do think I would just click knock. I would just click knock off here. I was talking about the scenario earlier on, because he's gonna go for recover potentially, predicting you the pursuit. And even if he switches out, oh my god, stop this man. He's just too good. He's just too good. I would have made the same play. I would have also knocked off there. I would have also gotten another play by Nintendo. Holy flip. So now this Weevil is basically dead. It took Hazard, it took Helmet, and he gets... if he doesn't defog, <laughs> like what is this Weevil even doing? Like. The Paralyzed Weavile well, pretty much doesn't do anything at this point. Um, I assume that's Bandit damage. Is it 31 to a defensive Landorus? We can call it that real quick. As a knockoff. Yeah, knockoff does absolutely nothing from Life of Weavile. It has to be Choice Band. That is pitiful damage that no Life of does. It does 20 to 24. What the fuck? This Kalk does not sound correct. Oh. I put Landris without an item, I was about to say, what the fuck? So yeah, knock off the 30 to 36. And he got 31, yeah, I assume that's Bennett for sure. We yeah, yeah, we don't see life of that's Bennett. Obviously. And he did you turn on the Clef, gets in the Vol Corona, and this Clef... Clef's last move is gonna be... We still don't know yet if he's rocks on... Yeah, actually, yeah, he showed lo rocks on Landris. So the last move on the Clef could either be Flamethrower or... Calm Mind... I don't think it would be Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave makes some sense too, but I'm thinking the way it has been played that it's Calm Mind Clef. And he does Kurens up here. What what did Volcarona run back in the day, by the way? I think it runs Fire Blast and Giga Drain, right? Does it run Fire Blast, Giga Drain, and HP Ground? But he does switch out and potential Psy Shock. It's a Scarf Light that goes for Trick. So I assume he doesn't have Buck Bus, because otherwise he would have stayed in there. Um, yeah, Nintendo is just going to click knockoff, I assume. Because, like, Shake doesn't have good knockoffs. Yeah, actually, Clefable is a good knockoff switch in, but he does click Icicle Crash. Icicle Crash is a good play in the sense that Clefable already lost its item, so Clefable would have been a good switch in the knockoff. I mean,. Yeah, I just said he didn't have good knockoff switch, but he obviously had a clef. And Nintendo's just getting every 50-50, kind of, like, kind of 50-50. It's 
between like Shakes Rewa versus the Stami earlier was kind of 50-50. Now between Pursuit and the Lari like staying or switching was kind of 50-50. He got that correct too. Then he got the play correct where he went hard the Enfi on the rocks. Like he's just Oh my god. So he goes into Landris and he dies to Icicle Crash. I don't really know what that was. What was that? He just said GG in forfeit. Like what the fuck? Wait, what? What a fucking beating. <laughs> Holy shit, stop Nintendy somebody. I think Brazil was 1-4 before this, they were not doing too well. And now they're tuned 4 and... US East, I think they were tuned 1. But yeah, let me just see what happened there. The Kelly was paralyzed, so he didn't want to go Kelly because... That can get para flinched, slash it gets walled by... No, it doesn't get walled by Stani. But Kelio is not gonna do anything. We paralyzed Kelio pretty pretty much. Like Nintendo had responses to um, him going Kelio there, and I can obviously understand that you don't want to get Para Flinch down. Did he go for dodging Isaac Crush there? I don't really understand. The thing is, if Shake went to Metagross there. Yeah, if Shake went into Metagross there, Nintendi just sacks something. Like, Nintendi just sacks the Ferrothon or the Weaver and then he wins with Wall Corona. So I think, yeah, I think Shake couldn't have won this. The Hazard combination, oh my god. He got completely blown away. Hazard on his side was super annoying. T Wave Stummy fucked them up. The other pump miss was a bit annoying, but I don't think it was really. Like, it didn't play a role in the outcome. Like it didn't change the outcome of the game. And the, uh, if the Clavera had Thunder Wave, he could have T-Waved of all Corona. And that would have been nice for Shake, but... Well, Corona pretty much just destroyed him at this point, like... It didn't even matter what he did here. Like, I'm just going off this Vol Corona being Fire Blast and Giga Drain. Because that's just the move it needs to kill the, the Caldeo, and Fire Blast kills... I mean, the Weaver obviously has to Giga Drain because it's low. This dies to Fire Blast and might even die to HP Ground at plus one after hazards. Uncle Fable, if it's Comet Moon Blast, can't beat Volcarona. Actually, it can stop Volcarona out of Fire Blast, maybe. But we don't know the last move on the Clefable. Maybe the Clefable has Flamethrower. He didn't show it yet. I was assuming it was Calm Mind. And I was thinking that he should have tried to win with Clefable, but I don't think he would have been able to win with Clefable because he lost his leftovers anyway. And like, like and then he still had a lot of months left. It's not like he couldn't play around the Clefable even. Like if he gets in the setup war with Volcarona and Clefable, Volcarona is obviously fastest, so if he's gonna be attacking first with Volcarona. He has the chance to get crits on the one side and on the other side Clefable can't really touch the Volcarona back. So Nintendo will always be like on the defensive and eventually get crit. Yeah, uh, like I'm really trying to see find a way how Shake could have won, but Well the Stami switched out earlier if he went for pursuit there. Um, that would have been nice, but would have had changed the outcome of the game. I, I really can't see a way how he could have won. Nintendo just pressuring with Hellas was huge too. But I did want to run one Kalk if Volcarona has to... If Volcarona had to risk... I did want to know if Volcarona had to risk a Fire Blast versus the Metagross at plus one. Let me just see if another game started already. Oh, snow game started. Oh my god, I fucking missed turn three turns. So yeah, I'll record the snow game. Thank you guys for watching. I'm pretty sure that... Like, Shake had that game. There's no point in calking anything. So peace out and I'll see you with another one soon.